Okay, in this video, we are exploring the dot product and cross product. Let's start with the dot product. The dot product is a product of the projection of one vector onto a second vector and that second vector. It's a pretty complicated sentence. So let's take a look at what that means from a graphical point of view. Let's say we're given two vectors a vector A and a vector B, and we're asked to find the dot product of A and B. What that's saying is that we cannot just simply multiply the magnitude of A times the magnitude of B. What we need to do is multiply the magnitude of A times the projection of B, and that projection is a projection of B on A. Okay? So we know that the projection of B on A is equal to the magnitude of B cosine of theta. And by the way, theta is the angle between these two vectors. And that projection here, which we call B sub X, simply what it means is this. If we were to lay on this line here and look up at the vector B, the vector B would appear to look to us as though the vector B is has only a length of this long. Okay, so expanding on our equation now for the dot product, now that we have that explanation out of the way, the dot product of A and B then would be equal to the magnitude of A times magnitude of B cosine of theta, or we may also write it as the magnitude of A cosine of theta times the magnitude of B. In the first case, what we're saying is we're multiplying the magnitude of A and the projection of B as seen on the vector A. And for the second one, what we're saying is we're multiplying vector B, the magnitude of vector B, and the projection of A onto B. In either which case, either answer will give you the correct answer. And both cases, the answer turns out to be a scalar. Okay, so this is one way to find the dot product of two vectors. Another way to find dot product of two vectors, let's say if the vectors are given to us in rectangular form, and those vectors happen to be vector A and vector B in a two-dimensional uh, space, we take the, multiply the X components, both from A and B, and multiply the y components both from A and B and then sum those two terms together in order to get the dot product. Okay? If we're in a three-dimensional space and vector A then would then have an x component, y component, z component, and vector B would have an x component, y component, and z component, we'd multiply the two x components together multiply the two y components together and multiply the two z components together and then sum each of those product terms up together in order to get the dot product of a and b in a three-dimensional space okay so that's the dot product what about the cross product well the cross product is a vector at right angles with two other vectors so in this case here, let's say, for example, we have two vectors. We have a vector A and we have a vector B. And the cross product of those two vectors is 90 degrees from each of the two vectors here. So the cross product here is 90 degrees, and that's why you see this box here, 90 degrees from A, and it's 90 degrees also from B. Okay, and by the way, A and B have this angle in between them, all right? And this is in a three-dimensional space, I should mention that. This is in a three-dimensional space. In this case, A is along the x-axis, B is along the uh, uh, z-axis, pardon me, and A times, A, uh, say A times B, or A cross B, is along the y-axis. If we want to find the cross product, we may take the magnitude of A times the magnitude of B, multiply that by sine of theta, where theta is the angle between A and B, 
and multiply that by the unit vector of the cross product. And that unit vector here is represented by this black arrow. Now the unit vector is a little bit tough to uh, squeeze into this video here uh, because of it. It's a little bit uh, takes a little bit of uh, explanation in order to uh, to get that across what exactly it means. So we'll show a different method for finding the cross product in a minute. Uh, for the cross product, though, unlike the dot product, the cross product, the result is a vector. Okay, the cross product's result is a vector. So let's look at a different way to find the answer uh, for the cross product. So let's say we have two vectors again, three-dimensional space. Uh, so they have A, you have an X component, Y component, Z component. If we want to find a cross product, the X component of the cross product, that X component of cross product will be equal to the Y component of A multiplied by the Z component of B minus the Z component of A times the Y component of B. The Y component of the cross product will be equal to the Z component of A times the X component of B minus the X component of A times the Z component of B. The Z component of the cross product is equal to the X component of A times the Y component of B minus the Y component of A times the X component of B. Now, how do we go about finding that? Well, we may find that information through via determinants. Okay, so as you can see, I, I set up a matrix where I have my X component, Y component, and Z component here in the first row, or X, Y, and Z in the first row. And then my two vectors, A and B, their components occupy a separate row. So A, X, A, Y, B, uh, pardon me, A, Z, B, X, B, Y, and B, Z, okay? And what we do now is we draw a line through the very first column, the very first row. The only thing left uh, without a line on it are the AY, AZ, BY, and BZ. If we multiply AY and BZ and then subtract AZ, BY, you'll notice that this is the X component of the cross product. Now for the Y component of cross product, we take the line that was here and move it now to the center so that it goes over the Y components, okay? That leaves the AX, BX, AZ, and BZ exposed, meaning without lines on it, okay? So now if I take AZ multiplied by BX, take AX multiplied by BZ, Okay, you'll notice that these are the terms in this equation here. So it's AZ times BX minus AX, minus, uh, AX times BZ. And again, that's this term. For the Z component, we move that line now to the very last column here, leaving just AX and AY, BX and BY exposed, meaning without the lines on it. And we take AX times BY minus AY times BX, and we notice that this is the, or these are the uh, terms in the Z component, okay? All right, so that's how we go about finding the X component, Y component, Z component of the cross product. All right, so the final thing I'd like to go over is how to determine when we're dealing with the cross product how do we determine the direction of the cross product of two vectors being A and B? Okay, so let's uh, take a look at, a closer look at that. So the cross product, remember we said the cross product forms a 90 degree angle with both the A vector and the B vector. And the theta is the mag, or not magnitude, but the direction between the angle between the A vector and B vector, all right? So if you take your right hand and 
let your, in this case, your um, mid, your your index finger here, let that be your A vector. Take your middle finger, let that be the B vector. When you move A towards B, okay, those indicate your that you're taking the cross product of A and B. And whichever way your thumb points on your right hand, then that tells you the direction of your cross product. So you're curling your A, your index finger, towards your B finger. And whichever way your thumb points on that hand, being the right hand, that tells you the direction of the cross product. Okay? All right. So in this video, we went over the dot product and the cross product. And if you have any other questions about, for instance, vectors and so forth, I do have some other videos on YouTube where I go through uh, vectors and magnitudes and directions and uh, X component, Y component being rectangular form, polar form on YouTube. The, here you can see my YouTube channel, the YouTube channel is www.youtube.com slash C A Let's and PhD P E. Um, if you have any uh, additional questions about much more complicated stuff, I do have some material on my website. My website is www.clydeletsum.com. Again, please do uh, subscribe to my YouTube channel for future uh, lectures, video lectures on different physics and engineering topics.